Welcome to Weekly Wins and Losses. My name is James Hepner, former real estate entrepreneur turned self-development hacker, coach, and fulfillment strategist. Each week, we bring you a thought to wrestle with that will help you live fully alive and gain more life. Real life is made up of both wins and losses. Both were designed for your good. That's basic reality. Without facing and learning how to embrace your losses for greater gain, you miss out. You leave 50% of your life experience on the table. So with that, let's begin the show. With inflation rates rising, interest rates shooting up, gas prices skyrocketing, and the continued global unrest, it's easy to find what's wrong in the world. Tony Robbins says, what's wrong in the world is always available, but so is what's right. Instead of trying to hope and wish the world into a better place, it's time to make the most important decision any of us can ever make, and that is to invest in yourself. Now, you know I've always stood with you as you've navigated the uncertainties of life's reality. However, it's now time that I step up and take decisive action to walk alongside your current life journey in a new way, and that is by making myself available to you in a radical, new way during these challenging times. So for a limited time, I'm inviting you to a 45 minute strategic business life consultation. No charge and no strings attached. This consultation is where you'll regain the reins of your life. It's where you'll gain clarity on exactly why you're stuck, moving you directly towards your optimal outcomes. And I'll be honest, and I'm humbled to say, however, my client's generous reflection of their time spent with me reveals the truth. The skills they've been able to master in such a short period of time by engaging in our one-on-one strategic sessions have changed their lives in so many ways. This is the only invitation that I can fathom that will put my skin in the game of your life in such a way that will allow us, you and I, to address your specific needs with precision and excellence. 45 minutes, just you and I, together on one call to get you headed in the direction you crave most. Here's what my clients report after one-on-one sessions with me. A decrease in indecision. A increase in clarity, confidence, and courage. An increase to fully capitalize on what's directly before them. An increase in the impact that they crave to have at work, on their families, and inside their communities. A decrease in pain and suffering. A decrease in anxiety. So, if you want to move beyond old stories, get clear in where you're headed so that you can shake your world, then here's a rich opportunity for you today. One-on-one strategic business life consultation with me. One-on-one 45 minutes. So, if you want to maximize this opportunity, if you want to reclaim and regain your inner power, then you're going to want to slow things down during these challenging times. And how? Well, engaging and getting right with your life and making a life plan. I should let you know that this offer will fill up and expire. Click in the show notes to get your 45-minute strategic business life consultation. No charge, no strings attached. May this episode change your everyday life. But the question is, is the world ready? (laughs) There's that voice in my head again. (laughs) There we are, folks. This is Robert. (laughs) Robert likes to wander around and Robert likes to be curious. So, Robert, I don't think I've ever started a podcast off quite like that. The guests looking around the room like, that was awesome. Welcome to the show, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. I'm happy to be here, you know, because I like to have fun. And I could tell you and I are already going to have fun because you want to travel to New York. You want to travel to Dubai. You want to go to Paris. You're a man after my own heart. I love that. There you go. Thanks so much, folks. Robert Raymond Riopel. Help me out there, Mr. Riopel. <laughs> Yeah, just real pal. Yeah, don't <laughs> real, real think pal. it, James. Don't overthink it. <laughs> is an international best-selling author, app designer, entrepreneur, and trainer who has spent the past 18 plus years traveling around the world sharing his passion. He has also shared the stage with and trained many of the top trainers and thought leaders in the world today. 
Now, as you can tell, he has some energy, and he'd like to say, and I agree, he's got some high energy and a heartfelt style. Mr. Robert here draws on his journey from humble beginnings to financial freedom at the age of 12. I mean, 32, sorry. <laughs> to inspire individuals into tapping into their greatness, realizing that he is not the only person that struggles, Robert's clues open individuals up to the possibilities that lie within them. And that is why he is a highly sought after presenter. So again, Robert, welcome to the show. When I got to know you a little while ago, I'm like, now here's a guy that swallowed a firecracker. I think him and I are <laughs> in, in the same league. <laughs> Maybe it's because we're both Canadian. Is that possible? Why not, right? Apparently we're so right. free here. We're, we're so happy to be Canadian. <laughs> why exactly. it is that I want to go here, I'm not sure. But anyway... You know, for the experience, um, I've spent a lot of time in New York doing trainings and that, and I love just watching people. So if you want to go to a great place to watch people, go to New York, I got to tell you, and just stand back and marvel at all the energies. And Dubai, I did my first trip ever, which was last March, so just over a year ago. Mm. Another fascinating place. You know, when you see a car rental company, and it's not Ford's, it's not a Chev, it's not a GM, it's you know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Rolls Royces, that's what they're renting out. It's like, I think I'm in a different planet right now. <laughs> so it's definitely an experience. The last time my wife and I, and I think I mentioned this to you, Meg and I have been together for 27 years, married for 22. Last time her and I were in New York several years ago, I'll never forget. And you know how in, in, you know the Canadians here, we like to apologize for, for everything and anything. We say sorry for Pretty much, that's just our polite gesture for hello and goodbye. Sorry, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so I went to New York and, and we went to this uh, nice restaurant. And, and so they brought my wife a nice margarita. And it was it was, it was a sizable bowl. It wasn't a cup, it was a bowl. And my wife is super polite and super generous. And of course, when she's walking New York, she's, you know, people bumping into her and, you know, and I'm walking kind of beside her and she's apologizing to everyone. And I'm sorry, sorry. And these people don't notice because they don't even know what they're doing. And I'm looking at her saying, hey, honey, just before you get to the restaurant, I say to her, hey, I, you know, I don't know if you understand what's happening here, Meg, but it seems like everybody's going someplace and I got reservations. So we might want to pick it up anyway. So we get to the restaurant. We, we have the. We have the meal. She has her drink. And I guess, and I never knew this about Meg, but when she has, and we don't drink, but I guess that that bowl was enough to give her some courage or some liquid courage. We walked back home and she walked out with elbows wide like this. And she was like <laughs> creating an opening, like Moses parting the water. She, and I was just following her. I'm like, this is amazing. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing is, is people in New York respect that. Hey, we'll give you a space. You're you're asking for space, not a problem, right? <laughs> Spot on. You want, we give, no problem. You just have to go in and declare it. Make yourself the size you want to be in. It'll work. It'll work. And, and so you just said a great principle for success right there, James. Like mm -hmm. right there, declare what you want. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people don't do. They think they want this or they say they want that, but they don't align mm -hmm. themselves. And so when your wife got that, let's call it the liquid courage, and all of a sudden she said, I'm going to declare what I want. Look at how the universe opened up to provide for her. And that's exactly just like in life. Mm -hmm. And so when you, you know, I'm a big believer in manifesting and I'm a master manifester because if there's something I truly want, I'm putting all faculties towards it because the moment I don't give it my full focus, then there's a, it ends up going sideways. So great lesson. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating, right? I, uh, my wife always says that I became a feminist before she was. I'm like, well, but I guess one of the things that I always have done for her, I've always asked her, what is you want? And she's always like, well, she's like kind of, she's, she's strong. Like she's a, she's a firecracker of a soul. Like she'd fit right in here, but she kind of finds a way first. She observes the scenario, what's happening. And then she finds a way and she, boom, she enters. And it's like, you know, um, so I've always been about wanting her just to own her power and not, and it's weird because I would say she's never really looked to others to find her power. It's just that she finds her safety, which I think a lot of women, like they're, they're the kind of women and feminine energy typically is like, well, we want to be a benefit, benefit through nurturing and, and through being yes. tender. And so it's like, well, how could I be a beneficial human? And so I think they naturally do this, but all I know is <laughs> Meg on the way back. And like you said, declare, she declared that I think for me to be a benefit, I need to get from here, which is the restaurant, to the bed someplace because I'm tired. 
So she yep. made it there and she made it there in style. So no, that was beautiful to watch. And, and, and all that I realized is she just needs some priming. We didn't go back to the bottle after to say, this is the formula, but the bottom line thing is it's like, and to your point, declaring. Yeah. What do you think yeah. is required? Like ultimately we're just going to jump right in, but yeah. master manifester to declare give me give us the listeners here give us an example give us an example of when you stumbled into that and how it applied to your life and what happened oh my goodness well yeah stumbling into it is kind of a good way of saying it because i didn't realize i was existing in life i wasn't you know experiencing life i was existing for most of my life mm. going by the programming i was taught growing up you know hey it doesn't matter if you enjoy the job you're doing or not if it's secure, what a joke that is, and it's paying you good money, even if you don't like it, that's what you do to support your family. And that's what the way I was raised. So look for a union, look for a city job, look for who you could actually work for that gives you that security and that pay. And you know, all of a sudden at 21, I'm being laid off from the third major company I'd worked for. And I'm going, well, I'm working hard. I'm staying loyal. What the heck's going on here? And out of necessity, I start delivering pizzas for Domino's Pizza because of my work ethic. I start making more money than I did in a real job. And soon I become a manager. My wife becomes my assistant manager. And next thing you know, we're working open close seven days a week. And we're, you know, we're creating and we're, and we're loving what we do. We're working together. And so that's great. And then all of a sudden imagine though, James, the a year and a half in of being managers and all of a sudden my franchisee comes and says, oh, guess what? I've decided I don't want to be in Domino's Pizza anymore. So the two stores are going up for sale. And I went into panic mode because we had watched enough stores around us in the city get sold. We knew that the managers were replaced right away because the new owners came in with their team to do it their way. And so my kind of answer to the situation was, and I'm in a little bit of a freak out, is like, okay, we got to start talking to the other franchisees. Who needs a manager? And my wife's looking at me and she finally lets me finish. She goes, why would we do that? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why would we do that? She goes, we're qualified to be franchisees. And I don't know how much you know about how Dom works that way. She goes, why don't we just buy the store? And I looked at her and I'm like, cause we don't have any money. That's why we don't buy the store. <laughs> and I, we're both the youngest in our families. My wife's youngest of five. I'm youngest of four. She was raised by a single mother though, who taught her, you figure it out. And this was probably the first kind of real example I noticed of manifestation is because the moment she said, let's find a way to buy the store. I had no choice but to fall in line on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, let's start learning. How do you do that? And we made a lot of mistakes. And every time we made a mistake, I wanted to quit because James, I wasn't in alignment fully. I was like, let's see if it will work. It would be nice if it works. If not, I'm going to still talk to franchisees, but she was full on committed. And even though we made a lot of mistakes or had downturns, it was like, no, we're still going for it. And we ended up getting 100% financing to buy oh. both the stores my um, franchisee had for sale, even though we didn't have money of our own. And it's, it's when I came into alignment and she was in alignment, all of a sudden we became unstoppable wow. in creating what we wanted. Wow. It's almost like you <laughs> inadvertently started declaring chaos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, like you said, let's find a way. You know, finding doesn't sound to me an awful lot like the straight line to get from where we want to, from where we are to where we go is directly this. Let's find a way just says we're in the game to be curious. Let's yes. discover where it takes us. And what I'm saying is you literally declare, and when I say chaos, I don't mean the unhelpful side of chaos. I mean the helpful, the beautiful side of chaos, right? Like the feminine spirit is a creator. It's a chaotic presence for yes. what? to be dramatic and theatrical? No, but no. it is to create and it is to bring. So talk to me a bit about, I've got to know you a bit. And you talk a bit the four, about the four currencies of life and the life phases. Yeah. Why do we resist the phases. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're talking about, and I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're in alignment with this because chaos is natural. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to hear that because I said it. I'm going to say it again. Chaos is natural. And it's when we resist it, that it, you know, I'll, I'll put it like this, James, have you ever had a lesson come to you from God, the universe, whatever higher power you go by, mm -hmm. and you don't pay attention mm -hmm. to the lesson, does it just go away? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. It yeah. comes back with a harder kick upside the head yeah. until yeah. you get it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's why people get frustrated with chaos because they're like, oh my goodness, this chaos is coming in my life. But chaos, we as human beings were meant to evolve. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we get stuck or comfortable, that's when chaos comes in to help us evolve. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the phases that the life flow that we go through, I like to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. Mm. I tell people I have one brain cell left. I'm doing everything I can to take care of it. <laughs> and so at least you admit you got one left, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I was being generous. Okay. And so I use the acronym of open for the four phases that there are in the um, cycles. And the O stands for the observation phase. In this phase, this is where you are not a human being. You're not a human doing because you, some people have heard that saying, Hey, I'm a human being, not a human doing. You're neither in the observation phase. You're actually a human creating. Mm. This is where, what would I love to have? Mm. And let's use the example um, of your wife. In that phase, she's like, I want to get home or get back to the hotel and get to my bed. So she was creating, this is the result I want to see. Not how am I going to do it? Where is it going to do? How long is it going to take? Just this is what I want. And this is where meditation comes in, quiet time, space for yourself to really tap into what you truly want. Two types of wants. Ego wants, which is usually immediate gratification, I want it now, or true wants. This is something that would really impact my life. And it, it just feels like it's something I want. And so when you're in the observation phase, don't worry about the how to. I love creating vision boards. This is the time to create those vision boards. Just take the pictures, put them there, whether digitally or cutting them out or drawing, put it in front of you so you can see it. So you the would say this is crazy. So would, so, sorry, sorry, Robert, uh, would yeah, no you worries. say that the observation stage is almost like the what stage, right? You're, you're yeah. saying, what, what is it that I'm. Yep. Yep. What, what would I love? What would I like? What would I want to do? Look, you're every time you go in an observation phase, you probably switch those signs behind you to different cities mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now your mind's going, Oh, instead of New York, maybe I'd love to go here. Mm -hmm. And so that's the observation phase, not how am I going to do it, but what do I want? Absolutely. The P this is the phase that, especially entrepreneurs, when they wonder why they self-sabotage, it's because they ignore this phase or try to think that they don't deserve it. The P stands for the pamper phase. And there's a saying that says, you cannot give what you don't have. And I love that you're already talking like masculine and feminine. Because yeah, the feminine isn't the person that goes by timelines and you know I'm gonna be here and here and here. That's the masculine energy. And a lot of people who have feminine core, whether it's man or woman, they end up getting sick because they are being held into a masculine energy, even though their core is feminine. And so in the pamper phase, this is where you take care of you. Mm. And there's two words that I say with this phase, creativity. Mm -hmm. And the second word is selfishness. Mm, and here's beautiful. what I mean by that. Because when you're in the pamper phase, this is when you go on a holiday or plan a holiday. This is when you maybe go for a massage, go get your hair done. If you have any, I don't have to worry about taking mm -hmm. care of that. Um, this is where you go and maybe you sit there for me. I take my phone out when I want to, when my mind's just going too crazy. It can be something as simple as 20 minutes. I put my earbuds in. I love the sound of rain. So I go to a, an app called Calm, C-A-L-M. And for 20 minutes, I listen to the sound of rain. I just close my eyes and that rejuvenates me. That replenishes me. Now, the reason I say creativity is because when you're being in the pamper phase, sometimes it does take creativity. Like uh, a parent might go, well, I don't have time to take care of myself. I've got my children. Well, is there ever time that they have a nap? Could you read a book? Um, for me, as an example, one of the ways I get creative is when I BC before COVID, when I was flying all over the world, people go, why are you doing these long flights? Why not just stay in North America? or it's an 80 hour to hour flight. Well, one, I love to see other cultures and meet people, but two, the selfish side of it is when I get on that plane and I sit in that seat, that's my time. I don't do work. I don't turn on the internet, Wi-Fi. I watch movies because I love movies. I read books because I love books. I eat good food and I drink great wine because I know the moment I land, for the next three to five days, I'm on stage for up to 12 hours a day, giving, giving, giving. So I, if I don't take care of me, and I learned this the hard way, James, I went through burnout when I first started training. I did way too much, never taking care of myself. And I ended up having to take three and a half years off and go through two back surgeries just to 
recover from not taking care of myself. Mm. So that's why, you know, the first thing, and here's a real actionable tip for your listeners. When my wife and I um, go to plan out our calendars, I live by my calendar now. And you've heard of the saying in wealth, the number one rule in wealth, pay yourself first. Well, my question is this, if that's true for money, why wouldn't that be true for your time as well? Which is an even more important commodity. So when we pull our calendars out, before we put anything else on it, we actually put it in pamper pieces, time for each other, time for ourselves, time for family, our health, those go on our calendar first before anything else gets put in place. So we know we have the time set aside. Mm -hmm. So that's the pamper phase. Do you have any questions on that one? No, other than the one thing that I'm drawing, and this is just as a comic little relief, but for listeners, you heard it from Robert. Robert basically said, before you buy your children pampers, you buy yourself a pamper. I <laughs> because- love it. You buy yourself <laughs> what you desire and what you need. It sounds to me that you're just talking about what you do first is you get into observation. So we're tracking with you. There's an open. So we got two of the letters so far, OP and you got EN coming, correct? That's correct. Right. So that's the exactly. O stands for observation and that's what I want. The P stands for pamper. And what I'm picking up is it, it, it reflects back and through me that that's the nourishing stage. The creativity yes. and, yes. you know, the selfishness, like, uh, yes, I want to read a book. I want to do this. I'm in the plane. I got an hour and a half, five, 10. I know when we moved to Malaysia years ago, we're not there now. We're in Canada. But anyway, I get it. You're on for a set amount of time. You can say, listen, I can sit here and be like all worried about what's happening on the ground. And I can't communicate with my teams and whatever. Or I can say, how can I use this? as a perfect unplug time. And actually yes. pampers are plentiful on a plane. If you just want it, they're plentiful, right? right? Especially if you go Malaysian airlines, they actually give your children free pampers. So there you go as a fun <laughs> little play. <laughs> I love that. Been on that airlines many, many times. Never needed the pampers though. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if they have adult pampers, but I know the children pampers, they have plenty of, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Cool. Yeah. And then the E, now we go into the third phase, which is called the energy phase. Mm-hmm. And this is why the pamper phase is so um, important because when you're in the energy phase, this is the get her done phase. This is when you get those meetings done, those emails, all the stuff for your business, for the important things for your life. This is when you get in it. And if I enter an uh, energy phase, I can do like an 18 hour day. At the end of the day, am I tired? Absolutely. But am I burnt out? No, because I've taken care of myself in the pamper phase. And when I talk to people, one of the biggest things that I find is a holdback why people don't have more of what they want in their life is they're like, but Robert, you don't understand my life. Mm. Uh, you, I've got kids. I've got a business. I've got a, um, a job. I don't have time. Mm. And what I've realized through my research is that most people, including this guy sitting in this seat right now, we can get really good at being busy, but are we necessarily productive? Mm. And there's a world of differences between the two. And so after I've put on my pamper pieces on my phone, the second thing that goes in my calendar are focus times. And I've gone through my own research and I've looked at all the different studies. And I've realized for me, an hour is the most I can stay focused on a task before I start getting distracted. And so I'll do 30 minute and one hour chunks where I set my alarm, I set my timer, and maybe I'm writing my new book as an example. I'll put from 10 to 11, write book. When I come into my office, I sit down, everything else goes off. I focus on writing the book for that hour. And what I've noticed on my equation is one hour of me being productive is about the same of six hours of me being busy. Mm -hmm. And if your listeners are really paying attention, I just freed up a ton of time for them. And so, you know, and I took one of my students, um, an amazing young lady out of South Africa that I coach. And she's got all these things that she wants to do and all these things, she, programs she's bought, everything. And her husband's always going, oh, you bought another program that you're not going to do anything with. Hmm. And so when she asked me to coach her, I said, here's what I'm going to coach you on. I'm just going to keep you accountable to use what you've already done. And the hmm. first thing I implemented with her was 30 minute chunks of focus time. And so now each day <clears throat> she does three of those. She's got herself up to three, five days a week where she does three 30 minute focus times. And she's now utilizing all this stuff that she hadn't for a couple of years. Her husband's now going, 
wow, um, when's your next coaching session? Um, the changes, the, and he's now coming on her side instead of scorning her. And her goal is she wants to be able to make enough money to have her husband retire. And now he's like, this is amazing in the change I've seen in you because she started getting productive instead of just being busy. And so in that energy phase, that's critical, get productive. And then the N, this one here, James, we got to be a little creative. I hope your people don't under, you know, don't have a problem with this, but the N is not the first letter is the second letter of the word, but I wanted the acronym open. So I needed to get creative. And in this phase it's called the cl um, unclutter phase, which is another name for chaos. And what's kind of cool, and I'll tell you in a moment why I call that unclutter, but in the chaos phase, this is where you, and listen closely, please audience members. This is where you courageously destroy something. See in the um, chaos phase and the unclutter phase, this is when you actually have to destroy something. Now it could be something as um, dramatic as a personal or business relationship that isn't working. And, and let me be clear, I'm not saying, oh, Robert said in this phase, I'm gonna go and <laughs> destroy my relationship now. No, if some relationships just aren't working, but people hang on too long, especially in business. This is the time to say it's time to let that go, whatever it takes to move forward. And the reason I call it unclutter phase is because you can actually participate with chaos. So it doesn't have to give you such a hard kick upside the head. And the way you do that is you find something that is cluttered up. So it might be, I come in every couple of weeks and I unclutter my office because I want to make sure, okay, I don't need this paperwork anymore. I can file this or shred this. I unclutter it. Or have you ever gone to the refrigerator and you open it and you're like, whoo, there's something in there that needs to be taken out. And you find the pampers in there that you meant to throw in the garbage, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't get my joke, dude, James, you, you man. I got the joke early. I was going to, I was going to prime you for something. I'm listening and taking notes, but then when you, so just backing it up a little bit, if you don't mind the listeners and even for you, Robert, earlier I said, then when I put my pampers onto my phone, I was, all I could think about is well, then when I put my pampers on, I'm like, no, this is not what we're doing. Go ahead. I got your joke. But I was, I, I, you, know, you know, I had a breakthrough. You're, you're creating a breakthrough for me. So thank you for that. Thank you for two <laughs> things. <laughs> and, and that's why I like to have fun because I yeah, believe I love way it. too many serious people yeah. on this planet. So uh, yeah. So when you go in and you take things, you just unclutter your closet, unclutter your refrigerator, whatever it is, you can actually volunteer. And that's why I call it the unclutter phase. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things to destroy in this unclutter phase is a negative belief that you've been hanging on to. Mm -hmm. You know it doesn't support you. You know it's wrong. Well, but Robert, how do I get rid of it? Well, proof is the cure of all doubt. This is where you go and prove that belief to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And when you participate in this, this will allow you to evolve because where do you go after the unclutter phase? It puts you right back into the observation phase, mm -hmm. which means now you're able to have bigger dreams. What do I really want? And then you keep going through this cycle faster and faster. And I will let you know, you have no control of when you enter or exit one of the phases. You know, probably the greatest cosmic joke out there is people thinking they have control over their life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> now you can flow with it and enjoy life, the ups and downs, because you're always going to have ups and downs, or you can resist it and have a miserable life. So that's kind of a brief overview of the four uh, phases that people go through. I love it. You know, to me, what... Uh... To me, what comes to to heart and to mind is uh, I just I take notes while people talk. So I hope you don't mind. I just uh, you know I do for myself. I do good. it to remember later on, and it's just because it's breakthroughs. And listeners, if you want to do the same, I'd encourage you to because most of any of the learnings that I do, uh, I I just allow things, information to pierce and penetrate. And so I'd encourage you to do the same thing, right? So uh, this is probably not the time to have your guard up and armor up. <laughs> and you probably aren't listening to a podcast if you're doing that anyway. But anyway, to make a long story short, what I'm hearing you say, open, fantastic. I'm just going to go through the steps, right? Um, and the reason I'm going to go through it is because sometimes people say, and how is this that like what Robert just described is you enter and then you finish, but then you continue. And so if you just think about a self-fulfilling prophecy, you just keep going up and up and it spirals and it just spirals up and up and up and it just, you keep going, going, going. What I love about it is the realness of it. Like we all know the story of Icarus. Icarus thought the idea to a great life was flying up close to the sun. And so he thought the best thing was just up, 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 better, 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 bigger is better, right? Until it's not. That's Until right. he got too close, the wings melted, came down and he realized actually his greatest gift was when he came crashing into the sea then he realized, oh, you see, you don't have to be afraid of certain things like 
chaos. How many people in life actually can well utilize chaos? Oftentimes we guard against this stuff and we defend against it. And let's be honest, there are certain stages like the observation stage, like what do I want? But I hear you saying it's almost like you start with that feminine energy and the feminine is a creator. So feminine, I'm not yep. talking about male or female, but nope. us male, we have you like I, like any man listening to the show or woman, you get to decide what is it, which energy set do you want to utilize? And so being in creation just lets you observe what you put on the table and you don't label it good or bad. It's not a problem. Nothing's a problem that nope. you put on the table. It's just there. And so yep. from all of this observation, you get to decide, what do I want? And you put combinations and patterns together and you go that, and I'm going to take this and this, Oh, what's going to happen there. And you're observing like, this is going to be magic, you know? And then um, you move that into, so you're in this place going, this is what I want. So you clarify what you want. That's what I'm hearing. You get clear, focus on what you want. Then you move into that nourishing phase and you focus on like things of, okay, so I need to take care of myself not last first, but wait a minute, I'm just beginning the process now. And it's like, actually, you just did some heavy thinking. You did some heavy breathing. You did some good feels. Now it's time to kind of like be with yourself and, and, and to trust the work you've done there. It's yes. going to, it'll actually be okay. How about you just walk away for a while and you live life and you say, yes, what do I want now? And you're like, actually, I like to do a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And again, what, I, what we're hearing you say, see, the flight doesn't go forever. The flight goes whether to Paris, to Dubai, or anywhere in the world. If it's a short flight. There's, an, there's a start and an end. Yep. So if you listen to what he's doing, he's saying there's a structure. So a start sets the timer. If he's not flying, I guarantee you, Robert, you don't just like all of a sudden the time goes away. No, this, you have your phone dingle on you or something, right? Yep. And so you get into this pamper. Right. You get into this beautiful stage of then all of a sudden you go, now I want to go to the next thing. So as you can see, things move. So you start with the feminine, then it moves deeper into the feminine. You're nourishing. And all of a sudden now comes a masculine. That's the doer. And the doer starts putting into action. So now you flip in, with inside of yourself. So women, if you're primarily um, feminine energy, you don't have to ask your men to do it. You can do it as well. But you can also ask for them to help because you're a receiver is what you are in your primary state. But I'm hearing, I'm hearing this wonderful, this charge going like, ah, I rub my toes for a bit. I'm well fed. I got this idea. Now let's see what can, let's go put it into the lab and let's go and create. Like yesterday, my son was creating this little airplane. And so he, so he wants to fly it outside and he's 17 years old. And I, I decided I was going to buy him the kit. And he said, dad, I don't want a kit. I want you to buy the individual parts and I'm going to build the whole thing myself. Meaning there's certain parts that come from China that don't come with instructs. So he has to figure out, he has to code things on his own. So all of a sudden I hear in the garage, he's in there and he's really excited. Like he's playing with stuff and his hands are going and I hear this humming. He, I walk in and there he is. And he's like, oh my goodness, dad. Oh, and he was laughing so hard. And I'm like, what happened? And he said, well, I didn't apparently fasten the the, the, the whole server motor down properly. And, <laughs> and it took off and it bust the fan. And, and he said, dad, I could have lost an eye. I said, Hey, son, how come you're not wearing your safety goggles? He goes, dad, I just want to get her done. I'm excited. So <laughs> what I'm saying is sometimes that get her done is like this alive and this energy, this focus, this libidinal, like, what do I do? Right? What do I do? And then you go to this unclutter phase. And honestly, Robert, and correct me if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing you say here, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth or what you're meaning here, but we all need to stand on a level of certainty. When you unclutter, they say, if you want to gain ultimate certainty, look in your surroundings, you'll gain certainty based on what is in your surroundings. So you tidy up, yep. you know, you volunteer, you look at the chaos, you tidy up and all of a sudden you're like, there's, there's a little negative belief sitting right there. I wonder why I, yeah. do, do, does that serve me? And you get rid of, get rid of, you integrate. So you look at it and don't blame it as right or wrong because you know what's coming next. And that's observation. What do I want? Which you don't blame. You just look at. So you're not going to blame. You're going to go, what is this? And then before you know it, you get loop right back in and you just keep going. Absolutely. Up up, right. That's beautiful. And, and, and that is it. And, and you know, so like, in, when's the last time you went into a closet and said, what clothes haven't I worn in months mm. and decide to donate in them more. And because mm. when you clear space, the universe abhors a vacuum. Mm -hmm. It'll come in and fill that space that you've created. That's why unclutter is so powerful. And don't, you know, the people that really have issues, and, and I learned this one the hard way. I'm on my hiatus. Mm -hmm. I took three and a half years off, but I originally said, I'm only going to take one year off because I was burnt out. But then all of a sudden I got comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. The worst thing that can happen because mm-hmm. chaos doesn't want you to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I got comfortable and a year came and went. And then it was like, well, I'm waiting for back surgery. I can't mm-hmm. start training again. Well, and so I got into some of my old negative non-supportive habits. And the universe after a year started going, Robert, you said you're gonna train again. Hello, you haven't started. And I didn't pay attention. So it came back with a little more force, a little more force until on August 10th of 2010, I got a message I couldn't ignore anymore. Mm. I'm, I, I'm where I lived at the time in Calgary, Alberta, my in-laws, they lived across the street and up and up seven doors. My mother-in-law called me and said, hey, we're having a problem with the TV. Can you come and give us a hand? I'm like, sure. Gorgeous day, I walk out of my house. There's a beautiful park across the street, about 30 kids playing in it. I walk up the street, help them out. I'm coming back down the sidewalk. I'm about to cross the street into my um, driveway. And all of a sudden a couple comes walking from the walkway beside our house and they're walking a dog and I'm an animal lover. So, and it's a big bull mastiff. And I said, hey, is she friendly? And they're like, no, no, she's not. We just rescued her. We're now starting her rehabilitation. So I stayed on the sidewalk and they stayed in front of my driveway and we're talking for a while and everything's going great. And eventually I knelt down and they slowly brought her over, you know, holding on to the leash tight. Wow. And she smelt my hand, no problem. Petted her head, petted her neck, not a problem. There was no issue. But for some reason, the moment I went to stand up, she did not like that and she lunged for my throat. Wow. And from the standing position, because I went to stand, my chin dropped and instead of getting my throat, she got my chin. And she chomped onto my chin and proceeded to try and drag me to the ground. And I'm instantly in shock. And the only thought in my head is, if she gets me to the ground, I'm dead. And so I stood up and she's now hanging. And the guy actually had to physically pry her jaws off of me. And then it's taking both him and his wife to hold her back because she's lunging back at me. There's now blood all over the place. I'm in that fight or flight, but in my mind, I'm going, there's 30 kids or so behind me in this playground. I said, look, I live right there. Get her out of here. They start dragging the dog up the street and I start going up my house, blood going along the driveway, the sidewalk. I'm about to go in the house. And the only thought that's in my head at that moment, if I get blood in the house, my wife's going to kill me. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy what goes on when you're in shock. Mm-hmm. And I opened the door and I, I thought I called for my wife calmly. She comes running. She sees the blood all over the place. She's like, what happened? I'm like, I got attacked by a dog. So she gets the towel, gets it to my chin to stop the bleeding. I'm now safe. So I pre- um, proceed to start turning white and about to faint. Mm-hmm. And she knows that if I go down, there's no way she's getting me to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So she goes into what we call her warrior mode. She looks at me doing the wobble and getting ready to drop. And she goes, don't you faint, get to that car. And I'm like, yes, dear. <laughs> and we get to the hospital. And if you know things, anything about dog bites, they don't want to close up a dog bite because they want any bacteria to be able to flush out with the blood. So the puncture wounds under my goatee, that was fine. They cleaned them up. But here on my chin, she had ripped through my chin wow. and it took nine stitches to clean that up. Wow. Now in that moment, you talk about chaos. Mm-hmm. In that moment, I had a choice. Mm-hmm. I could have went, why the did this happen to me? Or I could say, why did this happen to me? Mm-hmm. And the moment I asked it with a different energy, the energy of curiosity, mm-hmm. all of a sudden a universal principle that I used to teach my students came to mind that says that which is not utilized mm-hmm. is eliminated. And my gift of saying I was only going to take a year off and then start training again, one inch further, she would have got my jugular. And then me and my gift would have been gone like that. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I made a decision. I had to start training again because I didn't want to lose my gift. And, you know, that that, to me, when you get a clarity like that, I now look back and go, okay, universe, I'm listening. I don't need that big of a kick Mm -hmm. to the head anymore. I'm Mm -hmm. listening. I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. And that's why I cooperate with chaos now, because it doesn't need having to have something big like that happen. Does it mean it'll never happen again? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, something big like that? No, but I now choose to, you know, play with, with, with life instead of just existing. I've had my own experience with chaos and uh, um, the resistance of it. And I've learned that you resist what nature brings you. And if it's chaos, it'll just come more. Yep. So if you don't like the chaos, you don't want to kick the can down the road and get more of it. Now, I'm not saying we should try to get away from chaos because you won't. Life is order and chaos. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, Right. There's a lot of, um, uh, let me just say it like this, Mm. unhelpful suffering, the unneeded part of suffering 
it's self-induced that you bring on. So here's where you and I, I mean, there's another connecting point. We both a swallowed a bottle rocket. That, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you wear diapers. I don't, that's different. Just kidding. Yeah, good, good. Well, <laughs> no, you look yeah, like yeah. I'm older than you anyway. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I wear a hat is I'm losing my hair. It's thinning. So perhaps uh, there you go. Uh, no, but um, where we're very similar again is we have, done what I think, or experienced, I think what most of us experience, and that initially when something happens that we don't know what it means, we don't know what kind of meaning to give it, we just label it as unwanted, unneeded, and perhaps even bad. And what do we do with something we label as bad? We run from it, away from it. Yep. We seek relief from it versus utilize what's there. And sometimes life gets our attention with with a big snap on the chin like that and we reckon that actually it woke us up to our greatest gift so we begin to neuro associate that to label chaos as bad might not be such a smart idea in the future so right and that's exactly it you know and i have a great friend i i nicknamed him years ago the quantum monk hmm. and the reason i nicknamed him that is because he actually was a monk for eight years did hmm. over fifteen thousand hours of meditation but he also loves and studies quantum physics. Hmm. So he can tell you all about spirituality and back it up with science. Hmm. And I love what he says. He says this, he says, instead of being willing to live life, courageously hmm. allow life to live you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're having that awareness of where am I? Cause you know, the probably the most powerful words I use in my life today, James, is what's next. Mm -hmm. Because the world, as we witnessed back two years ago can change on a dime. And we can either play the victim or we can say what's next. And then once we decide what's next, then the new two next most powerful words that I've utilized in my life are all in. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I've noticed from traveling around the world and teaching over half a million students is that so many people, and again, m me included, yours truly included, look for that plan B. If this doesn't work, what could I do? If it doesn't work the way I thought it would, how can I make sure I'm still taken care of? And the moment we have a plan B in our mind, guess where our mind's going to gravitate to? Mm -hmm. Any little hiccup that comes in is going to go, oh, see, didn't I knew it wasn't going to work. I better go this direction and, and, and mm -hmm. initiate plan B. So for me, it's like, no, what's next? And I check in with myself. My wife and I, have, it comes from practice. When we make a decision now, then we go, okay, are we all in? And if we say we're all in, we're all in through the ups, through the downs until we come out the other end. Mm -hmm. And, and that's really made a huge impact on our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something that uh, I just want to draw us back, if you don't mind, um, back to your earlier uh, open observation, pamper, energy, and unclutter. We all know that there are stages in life that we tend to get stuck in. So you make this sound smooth. And anyone trying this at home, please do yeah. try at home. It is safe. I think you could endorse it's safe to try at home. Okay. <laughs> yes. okay. My son in the garage should be trying something different, but I got to let him do his, he's 17. So I get him, you know, let him fly his, his, his little project there. Um, but here's the thing. What would you say is something that everyone can do when they try on this formula at home and they feel a little stuck. When I think about stuckness, often what comes to mind for me is Firstly, not seeing clearly for what is. So you talk about what's next. You know, yeah. one of the things I wrote down is, you know, and, and not to say something you haven't said, but it's perhaps what's now, what's next and all in. I don't know. But again, I don't want to prime you towards anything. But how do you what what could you say to people who try to home? And and again, let's be honest, these stages, it takes a transition point between each one. And they say the most difficult thing in life is transition points. So when you feel a little stuck, maybe. I just love pampering myself. So I'm watching Netflix. Oh, it's still too, <laughs> no big deal. Popcorn again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you do to help yourself unstuck to move to the next thing within your formula, whatever that is, if it's what's next, all in or what now, whatever that is to help yeah, see well, clearly and then move. Yeah. Well, and one of the reasons, again, and you're bringing up some great points. So one of the reasons most people get stuck is because they start to get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And what the reason most people get overwhelmed and it's something you referred to earlier, Here's where I am. Here's where I want to go. What's the most direct line to it? And they, because in school, we're taught the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But there's no straight lines in the universe. Take a look at, take this. I, I, I encourage you, go and find the straightest ruler you have. Draw a line on that ruler. It's going to your eyes going to look straight. 
Now put that line under a microscope and notice how it's made up of thousands and thousands of squiggly lines because there are no straight lines in the universe. But because we've been told that, that's where mind goes. And the reason most people get overwhelmed is they're like, here I am, here's what I wanna go. And their mind instantly jumps a thousand steps ahead of themselves. Mm -hmm. How will I get there? What do I need to do? How long is it gonna take? What happens, the what if scenarios? What if it doesn't happen in the time mm -hmm. I want? Mm -hmm. And instead of that line or that journey being straight, what tends to happen is it goes, oh, this turn, that turn, this turn, this turn, and it goes like a crazy mess. And then finally, if you keep with it, it gets there. That's what the journey really looks like. So the reason people get overwhelmed is A, either they're a thousand steps ahead of themselves trying to plan every piece out mm -hmm. so they get overwhelmed, or they're stuck in the past on something that didn't work before and they're still holding on to it and playing the victim of, well, I tried this before, it didn't work. And the moment you're in the future or you're in the past, you're stuck and you're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So an easy transition um, tip I give people, take a deep breath. Come back to the present moment where you are right now. You can only breathe in the moment. That's why meditation, they say, focus on your breath because you can only breathe in the present. And then when you get present, you take a couple deep breaths and you bring yourself from being stressed out about the future or hanging on to the past. Ask yourself that question. What's one step, one little step I could take right now mm -hmm. to move mm -hmm. in the direction I wanna go in. And I like to mess with my mind. I don't know about you, James, but I love messing with my mind. And what I suggest for people, especially in the beginning, when you ask yourself what's one little step, make it so stupidly simple mm -hmm. that your mind goes, that's not gonna make any difference. Why do you think that? I, I want you to drive your mind crazy because what people don't realize when it comes to success, there's no such thing as a small success, medium success, large success. That's the mind making that crap up. A success is a success you want to create the habit. The habit's more important than anything else. So when I create the habit of taking one more step, I'm going to sit there and go, what's one easy step? Well, it might be, um, oh, as soon as I'm done this interview with James, I'm actually going to right away go and enter the details in my spreadsheet of, you know, kind of to track what, um, when I did this interview. And I'll make it that no matter how busy my schedule is, I can do that one step. And then the moment I do, then I celebrate it. It might be like a anchor with a fist bump, give myself a high five, a pat on the back, something really simple. And again, the mind's gonna be going, it can't be this easy. Yes, it can. Because the more you get in the habit of doing these little steps, one step at a time, pretty soon all of a sudden you're going, wow, I, I just said that I'm gonna write a whole chapter of my book today and I got it done without distraction. Yeah. And all of a sudden, wow, I, I wanted to close that big deal. And I just did, even though I had doubts. Yeah. And you can see how it manifests and grows and just um, starts to give you that snowball effect. It's really powerful. Seems to me like success is a behavior that becomes a habit. And you yep. have much control over that. You don't control life, but you have much control over. And so, Robert, what I hear you saying constantly is we don't we don't control life, but we do control certain things. And that is what we choose to participate with. So we can sit there yep. and just not be real and try to flee our presence constantly hoping that'll yep. take us to a place of, of goodness. However, so back to this thing on seeing clearly, because for me, I'm, I'm say, I want to laser down at a place of, um, and you come and you talk about this presence, like getting back to presence. So it's breath, different things. Um, and maybe I'll just even share a piece of like a business um, journey that I've had, just a small little thing. Um, and just to acknowledge the reality of what's directly in front of you. It seems to me yeah. like if I, and just before I do that, when I think about your, your, your bite to the jaw, listeners, if you'd observing what he was saying, the first thing that happened, the first thing is she said, what happened to you? And he said, I got bit by a dog. I got attacked by a dog, whatever. So you are acknowledging what just happened. So seeing clearly isn't to deny it. If I think about, I've had a business not do so well got a call from my uh, tax attorney and saying, I think, I think we might be in some water here. And that was many years ago. And so here's the thing, what I attempted to do, which actually landed me in checking out a life for about two and a half years, there's to my story, is I was in denial of this. It's a little like, if you think Enron, Enron says, what do you mean we're not that? What do you mean spreadsheets or numbers aren't that great? We're just going to like change the numbers. We're all Harvard grads. We're in denial of this. 
So what's interesting is it takes some guts to like, and sometimes you got to put on a pamper to see the reality of what's in front of you <laughs> because it's yeah. real. The only yeah. thing is you cannot deny what's real. So here's the thing. I find, tell me what you think, but I find the moment of seeing clearly what's there is the liberating moment because you actually stop craving away and being anxious and trying to perform your way out of it or try to make something from the past or something from the future happen. What you do is you begin to say, oh, I'm feeling this. And actually, I get to decide if this is okay or not. And going, actually, that's right. if I'm going to say it's not okay, the attorney said to me, it doesn't look that great. So this is what he tells me. This is reality, buddy. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Right? So it's like seeing clearly for me seems to, so back to the thought on when people get stuck, like in these, and you have a really nice system. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying your system creates stuckness. All, all I'm saying is sometimes we get, we get stuck in doing a phase too long. Right. We, you know, we forget we're not on an airplane. So we go, well, he said I can pamper myself. We wake up the, again, back to the pampering. We wake up the next morning and the TV's still going and the bonbons are laying everywhere. You know, sometimes we just literally don't transition. And so um, trying to just tease out that place of presence. And you talk about breathing in, out. In yeah. takes in life, out lets it go. So you're literally seeing that you're taking things in and you're letting them out. Your bite to the jaw, it's like you had to see clearly first and be like, okay, this happened. For you to, so listeners, I want you to think about this. Where in your life has something happened and you are in denial that it happened? Think about your child spilling milk. I don't know. Yep. You crash a car, your dog runs away, and you are wanting to think that this isn't real. Ask yourself, what good does that create in your life? And how stable does that make you? How certain, how energized, if anything, you're, you're pedaling away from it. You're running away from the gift, which is acknowledgement first. But then seemingly sooner or later, we have these wake-up calls like you had, Robert, right? Yep. When it's like, yeah, absolutely. if you're going to kick that can down the road, you're going to be brought right back to it. And you're going to have to embrace and accept that the numbers aren't great, James. And let's be honest, as soon as I acknowledged it, I could breathe into it and breathe out of it. And then from there, I could focus on what's the next step. So for me, it was, there was, I had to embrace what's now first and acknowledge that. And I hear what you're saying, right? I hear what you're saying. So, so yeah, uh, listeners, perhaps just have a little time to reflect. Where's that space in your life? And where are you just focused on, well, I need to focus out there, out there, and just calm down and be like, well, the milk spilled. My wife taught me an important lesson a while ago. This is like two years ago. She has this thing where something happens. And for a while there was getting so annoyed because whatever happened, she was just okay with it. And she would use the word, oh, okay. Yep. And I'd be like, honey, <laughs> we just like we got this new sofa and like the dog puked on it. What do you, what? And then she looks at me and she's, and she in her cool, cool, this natural, peaceful presence way. She says to me, well, it happened. So what does it help me to wish it hadn't happened? I'm like, well, now there's something to chew on, right? So, yep. So, yeah, yeah don't chew on what the jog threw up, chew on the thought. That's right. It. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love it. I love it. And uh, you and go ahead, Robert. There was an equation. Yeah, there mm -hmm. was an equation I was taught years ago that changed my life that I mm -hmm. teach as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. And the equation is E plus R equals O. Mm -hmm. It's not the event that's going to equal the outcome in your life. And this is again coming back to people think, well, I have to control things. You don't have control, events happen. But what you do have control over is how you respond or react to the event. And I love what you just said about how your wife handles it. She looks at it and goes, oh, well, you know, what am I, it happened. So what am I going to do with it? Whereas other people will, oh, the dog puked on the couch. Ah! And they freak out. It's like, okay, how's that serving anybody? Mm -hmm. And so as things go in your life, and this was a lesson when I just, my wife and I chose to get out of Domino's Pizza, we were actually over $150,000 in personal debt stressed out beyond belief. We'd been franchisees for eight years at this point, and we had to sell one of our stores out of necessity because we just weren't doing well financially. And so when we went to sell their stores, we had two stores and we wanted to sell the one that wasn't as profitable, but unfortunately nobody wanted it because the location it was in, if you bought it, there was no place for you to expand. The people that wanted a store wanted our other one because the only way you could expand there was by buying existing mm -hmm. stores. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, when my wife and I went through the process of selling that first store, we played the victims. He mm. took advantage of us. He kept delaying mm. the possession and um, he kept wanting to change the terms. 
and we ended up having to finance the whole um, sale and get monthly payments from him instead of you know him giving us cash up front and we played the victim but then when we started learning and growing ourselves and we looked back at that situation it was like wow no wonder we were so stressed out look at how we were responding to everything mm -hmm. and because we were in the victim mode our mindset he's taking advantage of us but then when we learned that we let him treat us that way. Mm. And also the ownership came back to what kind of space were we in that we allowed him to treat us like that. Mm -hmm. And it was like a 180 degree turn because we are now ready to be out of Domino's for sure. And we wanted to sell our second store, a store that nobody wanted. Mm -hmm. Also in the moment, our energy changed mm -hmm. and our energy went mm -hmm. to, you know what? We're gonna systemize the store mm -hmm. so that we don't have to work in it. And it's gonna become a nice passive income for us. So if someone wants to buy it, great. If someone doesn't want to buy it, that's okay too. We'll keep it because we can do what we want to do <laughs> while the store's making us money. And the moment we changed our energy and our perspective, all of a sudden, not one, not two, three people wanted our store. <laughs> and this is a year, like this, we're talking a year from one point to the other. And all of a sudden someone wants our store and, and we're like, okay, this is great. We went to the first guy who approached us and we said, here's the deal. We're gonna tell you the good. We're gonna tell you the bad. We're gonna tell you the ugly about this operation. Cause I'm very big on being upfront with people on what they're getting into. Good job. And I said, here's the price, non-negotiable. Here's the possession date, non-negotiable. We'll live up to our end of the deal. If you do, the deal keeps going through. But if you don't, no hard feelings, our deal's done, we'll go to the second person. Cause mm -hmm. you came to us first, that's why we're you. And we got an agreement and everything was going smooth until all of a sudden he had to put down a non-refundable deposit check. And all of a sudden he was supposed to meet us at a Timmy's and he didn't show up. And we get on the phone, we're like, uh, Eric, what's going on? Well, 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 now in this moment, we had a choice. We could get upset, but we simply said, okay, have we not told you everything? The good, the bad, the ugly? Yes, you have. Have we not been clear? Yes. Well, you're now not living up to your end of the deal. We're sorry, but the deal is done. We're going on to the next buyer. And we hung up. And now as soon as we hang up, my wife and I are going, we're frustrated because like months, we've spent a couple months on this. Like, and, but we're like, <laughs> breathe, breathe. And he's calling back within two minutes and he goes, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm on my way with a check. Now here's what's interesting though, James. We created that situation and had it been me, I would have went, great, let's go. But I don't know why, but my wife went, no, I'm sorry. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, what do you mean you're sorry? And she's like, we were clear with you. You didn't live up to your end. If you still want the store, the price just went up by $5,000 and you have three hours to make a decision. And she hung up the phone and I'm looking at her going, what did you just do? And she's like, I don't know, but it felt right. <laughs> Within three minutes, he called us back. He said, I agreed to the new terms. I'm on my way with a deposit check and everything went through smooth. Hmm. Just, and we ended up making an extra five grand on the store. And what was the difference? us playing the victim versus us going, it's how we respond. Mm -hmm. And we either, we're gonna, it's that saying, you teach others how to treat you. And we had taught the first guy, it was okay to drag us through the mud. The second guy was, no, we're gonna give you all the information and is, we're not, you know, so that you have all the deciding power, but this is our, our boundaries and we held to them. World of differences for us. Seems to me that you guys, did way more than react you guys responded in a classy way which is to initiate the highest state is to so you are listening to what was happening but then you weren't afraid to declare back to your point earlier you saw, said it so eloquently to declare that actually if you want to work with us and so of course you're making the statement to yourself listeners if you tune into who robert is robert and there's nothing wrong with owning pizza stores robert pizza is nice i like it once a week probably once every other week i love pizza not healthy for me but i love it my kids love it you still eat it seven days a week <laughs> <laughs> right i love it it's awesome <laughs> there you go right and so all we know is robert once really enjoyed the challenge of owning pizza stores the quality challenge likely just became different and robert said i want to move from there to where he is today how did he get here? You can see who needed to show up. Within the whole process, he could take, and he had many examples, he loved the examples you gave of where there was these little tears, or these little, uh, perhaps we're the victim here. Why did they do this to us? Why? And all of a sudden you started getting satiated with the level of chaos 
that you are resisting. And you're like, what can we just embrace? What can we just onboard here? And it's like, all of a sudden, what the universe requires is for us to show up. And what's fascinating is you know that by her, your wife saying $5,000 more, you know what kind of statement, that declaration, what that's brought in your life. Like, honestly, you do live on your terms. Like, when I first got to know you, I'm like, oh, here, here's another homie, whatever that means. But here's a guy <laughs> that does life on his terms. And often when I meet people like that, because I've been through similar experiences, I, we don't have time to unpack it here. But I can tell that you have had a distinct time in life when you've had to make a decision to say no more. And it isn't a non-loving stance. It's if I were to benefit humanity in this moment, what is required of me is going to take courage. They're like, what am I going to do? And you do it. It just feels right. Because guess what? The other way just doesn't work anymore. And you just want something different. So good on you, my friend. I love it. Dude, good job. Yeah. So I want to shift if you don't mind. (laughs) I love it. I want to shift. What is required to step into higher power? Meaning... Sometimes people say, well, is it a formula? Is it like we have to be satiated with certain parts of our life? Like it's too hard. What's the life setup? What is it for you? Like if you were to unpack this, what is it? Well, it it comes to what I would say to me is the greatest gift anybody can give this planet. Mm. And that's to be you, to authentically be who you are, whatever that looks like. Because when you're you, either people are going to like you for who you are or they're not. And if they like you for who you are, that's awesome. If they don't like you for who you are, that's awesome. And this is coming from a world-class people pleaser in my former life, where I look back now and I go, how much time, energy, and money did I waste trying to be someone else for all these other people? When I show up and I'm just me, I'm still blown away today, James, by the people that are attracted to my energy and go, I want to do business with you or... I, you know, I don't know what it is about you, but I just have a great vibe for you. And so all of a sudden it's opened up so much. It's taken that weight off my shoulder of trying to please everybody. And a lot of it came from as an example of, um, to help me transition. One of my mentors, cause I'm a huge believer in having coaches and mentors in your life. And one of my mentors, when I was learning to be a trainer, he said, Robert, he said, you can never be afraid to meet a student somewhere in the world and have to decide or f- remember who to be for who you are on the stage, who you're on stage is the person you are off the stage. And, you know, knowing the training industry, the way I do, it would blow people's minds away with when you can see some of the most dynamic people on the stage and you're like, oh my goodness, they're amazing. But if you were to meet them behind the stage and see how they treat staff and how they treat other people, they become, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing. And, and so when, because I've been blessed to train thousands of trainers, I tell them my number one rule is be you all over. That means if you're a jerk, Be a jerk on the stage because at least the people who are attracted to your energy know you're a jerk and they're not shocked later when all of a sudden they're interacting with you and they're going, ooh, where did that come from? And so the greatest gift which allows people to step into their higher power is just owning authentically with confidence, not arrogance, who they are. That would be how I would say to step into the higher power. Yeah, I absolutely appreciate that. One of the things I just wrote down is, for me anyway, business is about consistency. I know the strength of my business based on the consistency, on the regularity of. To a certain degree, business is boring. Business is really energizing. But to some degree, I got to have certain metrics and optics on my businesses <laughs> to be very boring. Like it's numbers, but, I, you know, is it is there a consistent in and outflow? Like, is there a consistent movement? Is there a consistent? You know, one of the things you mentioned about we're back to the Pampers again, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. <laughs> you got me now, my friend. That's <laughs> <It's> wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Stepping into your higher power. You know, it's interesting about that whole concept. Is you said people pleaser. You know, one of the things that I learned a little while ago, and uh, I'm just tuning into because I know you and I, we have a good chuckle when we talk about and not in anybody's chagrin, but you know, you and I, you meet you or myself in an airport and we're about the same as we are on stage behind the stage coming out of the yeah. bathroom, whatever it ends up being, we're about the same. So a people pleaser is actually a people deceiver yes. because you're not giving people yes. really who you are. And right. guess what? If you're deceiving people, think about this in business. So fair enough. If you, if you want If you want to be a jerk, that's your prerogative. You do what you want. I would argue you're better off showing, like you said, to your point, 
you're better off actually showing that to your people before they buy, because then when they buy, they can consistently stay alive with you. Because if you don't show them that before, they're gone as soon as they discover oh. you're not who you say you are. So if anything, oh, yeah. you want to actually promote that you're a bit of an arse. I'm not saying oh, yeah. you want to be doing this, but let's be honest. If you want to build anything that's sustainable, a business is supposed to be more than just an hourly, like I exchange my value, my time for, for money. Business is, is a machine mm -hmm. and it creates and it generates and it pumps out. You know, I remember an infomercial from years ago where the guy started off driving up in a Lamborghini and he said, look, this is not for everyone. He said, I'm a jerk and I own that. I like nice things. This is my home. This is my car. I only work with people who want to be like me. And he made millions because all of a sudden people were like, I have, I actually have permission to be a jerk. I love it and be <laughs> successful. And his infomercial was just, I, I studied it because he was so authentic of who he was mm -hmm. instead of trying to be someone else. And that's, mm -hmm. that to me is, that's amazing. And again, it comes with the confidence, not the arrogance of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the key to life right there. You know, you talked about the boringness of um, business. One of the biggest questions I get, you know, I, I've been blessed to personally train over half a million people in live trainings around the world. And one of the questions I get a lot is, Robert, how can I do what you do? You travel the world, you get to meet all these amazing people, you impact lives. And my response shocks them because I look at them, I say, if you wanna do what I do, then you've gotta be willing to do what I do mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. unsexy, mm -hmm. boring as hell, day-to-day -day things that allow me that when I'm on stage, I can take it to another level because mm -hmm. in reality, most people aren't willing They get bored with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't really need to do that. I'll do a shortcut. No, mm -hmm. it's the, you know, while well, you travel all over the world. Yeah. Have you ever really fought with jet lag? You know, you step off a plane after 16 hours of traveling and three hours later, you're stepping on stage because there was delays and you now have to train for 12 hours, do that three days straight, fly to the next country and do it again. Careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. And that's why having your passion be in alignment with your passion it is so important is because the days that I don't feel like doing and getting out of bed, I go, yeah, but this is what I love to do. And I'm going to make sure I have time to rest, you know, go back to the pamper thing. Um, when I come home from overseas, the first day or two days that I'm back, my wife and I put on the calendar It's called freedom days. Mm -hmm. And that means we don't, we do whatever we want. If we don't want to get out of bed, we don't get out of bed. There's no business. There is, if we want to watch TV all day, we do because knowing that if we don't give ourselves the freedom to regenerate, then we can't be of service to the people when we're really wanting to transform lives. And so it's learning that balance and it's come from a lot of years. And that's why I love to give the people the secrets to help them kind of get it. So they don't have to go through the crap I've gone through again, the importance of mentors and, and coaches. They can show you what works, what doesn't, but you've got to be willing to put the work in because mm -hmm. if you don't, mm -hmm. you're never going to be as great as you truly could be. And I think you got to, you got to really value the work. You got to value your journey. You got to, you got to see the breakthrough for what it is. Like Robert is revealing here audience, what, what actually works for him. Now, these are just really neat nuances. And I think the point for me anyway, a large point of it is to be about listening to what's happening. And when you sense there's a time for you to make a decision that you do, and then you make a non-negotiable. Like Robert, what makes me laugh is you have this thing where you say, when you come off the plane, you have these, what do you call them time? The freedom time, freedom oh, days. Freedom time. You and I have those words written down, except for my, my freedom and time. Uh, it, they're just swapped. So after my journey, when I came out of um, that, that dungeon of my life, 10 years ago, it's just over a decade ago. One of the things that I'm worked out is time freedom afternoon. So every other Friday, I have time freedom because I never prior to I never had an afternoon off. I worked every evening. Yep. So it's like, here's the thing, listeners, as you're picking things up, you know, schedule specific time. This is the whole pamper thing again. It's like what? So I could take this time off why not? Why would I not take? I need time to refuel. When you drive your car, when it's whether it's a Tesla and you fill it up with electricity or fuel, you fill it up with something. Now you're not yeah. a machine, but I'll tell you something. You are someone that has emotions, has feelings. You are not a robot. So it's not just do this and do. It's like this time I feel like actually taking two afternoons off 
okay, then I'll do that, right? And so, but as long as you and I love that. So what would you say in general, if you were just to sum up, not sum up your life because there's too much of it. You can't do it in a minute. Sorry, bro. You can't do it. <laughs> but if you, if you were to sum up, and I like to ask people this question, Robert, where do you struggle the most in your life right now? Just be flat honest, vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Where do you struggle most right now in your life? And what are you doing about it? I'm a procrastinator. Mm-hmm. And I fought for it for, with it for years as a bad thing. And I've learned to actually realize it's part of who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's where I came up with the quote that I, I say to myself, well, there's, I'll, I'll give you the quote and then I'll give you the um, mantra I use the most in my day-to-day life many mm-hmm. times a day. And so the quote is, design your day in such a way that procrastination cannot play. And so what that means is, because I've been financially free for 20 years now, April 1st of this year, so just earlier this month, was the 20th anniversary of when my wife and I actually retired financially free for the first time when we were 32. And so if I don't have to get up, it's easy for me to go, I'm gonna sleep in, I'm gonna take extra time. So on purpose, I actually schedule meetings, coaching calls, um, podcast interviews for first thing in the morning. So, because the moment I make a commitment to someone else, I know I'm going to carry through. And once I'm up, I'm up and going good for the day. So I've learned to embrace who I am in that procrastination side instead of beating myself up over it. But I still struggle with the self-doubt. Mm-hmm. That's something that's plagued me all my life. Mm-hmm. And I still do today. And people go, but Robert, look how successful you are. And it's like, almost like, yeah, but when will people figure out who I really am? And what's interesting is in all my travels around the world, probably the number one commonality I've noticed no matter the culture, the country, how you're raised, where you're born, that low self-esteem is a common denominator in so many places. And so that's kind of, you know, an ongoing day-to-day thing for me is that Mm -hmm. low self-esteem and, and, and and the procrastination. Mm -hmm. So I'm always aware of it. And because I do so much work on myself and I'm aware of it, I embrace it and not embrace it as a, oh, well, it's all good. It's just who I am. It's like, okay, I'm aware of it. So how do I work with it instead of resisting Mm -hmm. it? And then that, that, which leads to probably the number one uh, mantra I use in my day-to-day life multiple times a day. And it comes from one of my favorite animated movies. Mm -hmm. I love animated movies, James. I don't know about you, but I feel there's more lessons in there for adults than there is for the kids. (laughs) You you know, I'm surprised because you're not animated at all. No, right? Exactly. <laughs> and let's go to Frozen. Mm-hmm. And my favorite saying, let it go, let it go. That's the only part of the song that I know. <laughs> and I will actually, when I feel myself getting stuck on something that's bothering me, all of a sudden I'll take a breath in. And, and if I need to do it physically, I'll go, let it go, let it go. And that's my signal to say, wow, look at your how you're hanging on to this. Is it serving you? And then I can move forward. Well, that's a, that, that's a heart full. Thanks for that share. I really appreciate it. You know, self-doubt, such a fascinating play. I listened to a psychoanalyst uh, just unpack a little while ago. You know, there's some people who have faith and, you know, some people take their faith into religion. And so spirituality turns religion into orthodoxy. Typically religion is that it's organization, right? And so I'm not saying good or bad. It just can be. Um, but in order to build faith, you actually require doubt. If you don't have doubt, you don't build faith. So, and I'm not trying to do a reframe here because brother, I feel you. I know what it's like to doubt. Is this enough? Is this enough? And sometimes I think that can be helpful. Is this enough? Because it helps it, us. Absolutely. Right. It helps us to move. Yep. And we can That's choose if it's going to be part coming in, right? Yeah. It can, it, and it can move us not because we're afraid. We're just going, you know what? The only thing that I can do is move. Mm-hmm. Only thing I can do is participate with it. The only thing that I have any anything to do about is to, am I going to utilize it or try to eliminate it? Am I going to seek relief or am I going to be responsible with it? So um, another little piece, think about this, listeners, Robert, think about this. If I were to tell you I'm a very loving person, hmm, now that's profess too much because why would I need to tell you that if I am that? And so what's interesting is, Sometimes people say to me, James, you're such a loving, honestly, this is what they say. 
And I, 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 you know, I hate to say this. I'm sure they did the same thing to you. Like they, they give us these things, right? And they say, hey, you know, for example, like, so what is it? Like you love people so much. And what's interesting is I often, I look at them and I go, oh, and not because I'm trying to downplay anything that, that I've been working hard to design in my life and make room for things. It's been hard work. Right? It's been a long, long, worthy, long, hard work. But I look at, and the psychoanalyst says, have you ever realized that when somebody owns their role so much, that it's actually not helpful? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if, I, if you said to me, Robert, I'm such a wonderful dad, if I onboard that, if I believe that about myself, then all of a sudden what happens, there could be the smallest little tear or poke. I don't do something right. And all of a sudden I feel like my role as being the best dad, whatever that may mean. Every coffee mug says that. I got it all day, print these things. And <laughs> apparently they, they know that people are picking these things up and it's not true. They're all, anyway, to make a long story short, when you think about, I love people. Yeah, we love people. But I think there's something in it to be like self-doubt being like, mm, do I though? Because you know what, if, if you if you ask, do I though, it helps you to, like, I think yes, and perhaps. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. However, it's like, I doubt that that I am doing all that I know I can. So there's, there's, there's a reason to get out of bed the next morning there and not to prove to yourself. But it's like, I want to let this experience, my interaction with life, with people, I want it all tenderize and collaborate inside of me so that, you know what, may, maybe I can just be a bit more loving in a different way than I was yesterday. You know what I mean? So I love it. I love it so much. Thanks for being so honest. And you know, honestly, I'm not trying to solve anything because my friend, I'm like you, (laughs) you know, so I love it. And you know, if you had the hat off, I'd be able to see if you really like me or not. But (laughs) if you got that aerodynamic look, and and that's it, you're, you're hitting on the nuggets of gold. And, and, you know, I'm a big believer. uh, Oh, I'm, and you were kind of talking about it earlier. And it's something I live by. If I'm not enjoying doing what I'm doing, I'm going to do something else. And my wife and I, when we started with Domino's, we loved it. And it's when we quit loving it that the financial burden started happening. And we had to make that choice that we're not enjoying it. It's time to Mm -hmm. leave it. Mm -hmm. But how many people choose to just keep, well, it's what I know. It's what I know. It's what Mm -hmm. I know. And they get stuck in that rut. So, you know, be willing and have the courage to follow that journey of your life. Because Mm -hmm. everything that you go through is meant perfectly to allow you to be who you are. You know, one of the questions I've been asked sometimes is, Robert, if you could go back to the 18-year-old um, version of yourself and give advice, what would it be? I struggled with that. Mm. And I finally came up with, I would just tell myself, keep being you. Mm-hmm. Because all the good and especially all the bad I've gone through has made me who I am today. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't go through some of those downturns, I wouldn't be able to have connected with mm-hmm. some of the students that I've had an impact on because I could actually relate to what they were going through. Mm-hmm. Or because of my experience, all of a sudden they went, you didn't know this, but I went through that too. And you, what you said just helped me change my life. Um, gr- one of the greatest feelings I get is when a student comes up and they say, do you remember when you said this? Here's how it changed my life. Mm. And which is powerful, but what gets even more powerful for me is, it's who are the people I've impacted that I have no idea. Mm-hmm. And guess what? I don't need to know. Mm-hmm. You talk about mm-hmm. that ripple effect. I don't want a ripple effect. Mm-hmm. I want to create a freaking tsunami effect mm-hmm. of change because I've personally trained over half a million people, but whose lives have they impacted because maybe they had a little change and whose lives mm-hmm. have they impacted? That gets me excited that, mm-hmm. you know, I'm living my passion of helping people and I have no idea who they are and that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there you are in Calgary. Congratulations, your internet still works. Elon Musk, thank you. Starlink. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this is nice. So Elon, if you're listening, there you go. We, you know, we really appreciate it. Just do well with Twitter, could you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's all good. You got love. And, and we'll just embrace the Canadian side of him too, right? <laughs> yeah, why not? Because apparently he loves the Canadian truckers, so he must be good. Who knows? I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get into that. No, I don't think we want to get I don't think we want to go there. <laughs> no, I think we're good. So, Robert, where can people find you? Yeah, you know, well, I'm not going to give you my physical address. No. <laughs> actually, the easiest way to stay in touch with me is actually, I actually have a gift for your listeners because, James, I believe that one of our oh. most precious commodities is our time. And mm-hmm. the fact that you've taken your valuable time to interview me, mm-hmm. and more importantly, your audience has taken their valuable time to listen, that if they just go to robertreopel.com, just my name, 
R-O-B-E-R-T-R-I-O-P-E-L-M-O-U-S-E. No, don't do the last part. RobertRiopel.com. They're actually going to be able to download uh, my international best-selling book, the digital version of it, Success wow. Not a Clue, as our gift to them. Wow. But it does come with a caveat. See, I didn't write this book for people to get it, put it on the shelf and make it shelf help. That doesn't help anybody. Mm. So step, I go through six very specific steps in the book on how to really design the life of your dreams. And step number three is action. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference between successful people- Buy one, some pampers. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and so you have to take action. So I wrote it as a workbook and, and being the quirky person I am, I even, if I write in it in a couple of places, I'll go, hey, did you do the last action? If not, stop reading right now, mm -hmm. go back, do the action before you read any more. Because I know people are creatures of habit. And so if they go, they can download this book as our gift to them, read it and do the actions. And I guarantee you, it'll take you to another level. And mm. because I'm in my giving phase right now, James, when people do that, they're also going to be able to um, book in to have a 20 minute one-on-one -on -one with me strategy call where they fill out a questionnaire. And in 20 minutes, I just give them some strategy steps to get over maybe blockages or what's holding them back. I don't do any sales. I'm just there to help them in any way I can. And so they can do that as well. So there you go, Robert, one, one more time. Website, please spell it out for yeah. us. R-O-B-E-R-T-R-I-O-P-E-L.com. Always a good time. You say you're quirky. I just had to match it, my friend. I'm not sure if I got quite there, but I think you and I are on the same page. Oh, <laughs> it was we'll, well, we could talk for days. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we'll do a part two sometime. Robert, it was my pleasure. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for coming, Robert. All right. Thanks, James. I sincerely hope you enjoyed that little interplay. If you like the podcast episode, let us know by subscribing, leaving a little review, and sharing with a friend as you feel appropriate. Honestly, the guests that I host on this show, they love the feedback, and I personally love knowing that you're listening. So whether you choose to work with me as a guide or not, and that's your guide or not, that's simply great. Why, you ask? Well, because you're obviously one of those that's listened to the very end of this podcast. You've clearly made a decision to invest in yourself, and honestly, how isn't that just the best news? So if you decide you need and or want to get unstuck by activating your creativity and your resources, if you want to see things clearly, if you want to get to your next level, if you want to live with vibrant energy and passion, simply go to www.jameshepner.com for one-on-one -on -one coaching and or go to www.weeklywinsandlosses.com for the no charge Friday noon global community weekly wins and losses video call. So again, I thank you for investing in yourself. See you next time. My sincere hope is that you've gleaned a few nuggets for yourself and a few pieces of interest that help you move forward in your unique journey. So again, I thank you for joining me here. This is James Hefner clocking out. Until next time, peace out, rock up.